when I listen, I, I listen to Touch It, I'm thinking, oh, this is stuff that um, it you know your biggest single, um, yeah. But it's a far <laughs> cry from your first big singles or, or what I was used to. I, I yeah. um, it 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 was almost like a single that took a, crossed over to the pop. It and... was a, that was my first crossover, and it was huge for me, and it still is huge. It's twenty five years in July. Wow. 25th anniversary of Touch It in July. And um what a I'm so proud of it because this was me EPing my album. I did that. I you know what I'm saying? Like I met these producers through an AR rep, but that song I picked. And then when I asked people, they were like, that's the single right there. Well, when I got the feedback, like from my, my been like Queen Latifah, um, you know, who was also on that project. Um, yeah, like I said, I you know, I'm I was hands on on that. I'm very proud of it. I mean, so you've gone from the first album where it's like, yep, where's the song? Let me sing and have fun to like, well, how, how much, and this was in two years. I mean, you're spending half of that time promoting your first album and stuff. And right. now you have to go back and start recording a second album. And without the your mentor supporting you, I, that that doesn't sound as easy as you make it sound like, just having to... to, to no, it, it wasn't at the time. Thank goodness I wasn't thinking. And I was, like, I wasn't thinking about, A, how, how I felt abandoned, right? And how that was adding to my already, already all, all the abandonment issues that I had already had. I didn't realize how it affected me because I was moving. And, you know, I was also... I'm also a 25 year old, you know, artist who's able to party and, you know, kind of escape and then do work, escape and not really. I didn't have to sit on the couch until I was like 40 something. Like, you know, then it that's when it started getting like, girl, this is not working for you. Uh, <laughs> you know I mean? So um, I was I was I just had to do I was just doing and I had my own relationships. I knew that I had the I, I knew I could do it. I know I know I'm I'm creative, I'm talented. Like I knew what I wanted to what I wanted to explore and I did a lot of exploration. You know, I didn't stick to this oh I got to sound like this, it got to stay like I wanted to branch out. Wow. And they the label couldn't keep up with me. They couldn't they wouldn't get behind it the way they it it should have been different. If from a business perspective. Yeah. Um, everything happens exactly how I was supposed to. I have no regrets. But it could have been different had I had a different support, even within the label. Um, and because I was nobody's baby, so to speak, mm. they were just doing the obligatory what they needed to do to fulfill the contract. And I made it happen. Shit. I got, I mean, I got a smash single that <laughs> Janet Jackson loves. Um, you know, it's like her 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 she gets ready with that record and <laughs> It, you know, I like I know these things. Like I, you know, I, I performed it for a surprise birthday. Like it, like I did good. You know, and I'm, uh, yeah. I, I had to. I I made it happen. Me and God. Yeah. You know, God was holding me down. But how how did you yeah. agree to do touch it? Because, um, it 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 as I said, it's different from what you did before. So did you not think it was a risk? Like wow, who who who's who's with, with my R and B fans sort of no, connected this no i didn't see i wasn't thinking like that i'm a mm. musician i'm a music person so yeah. all the things that i was influenced by th that sounded great to me i don't i wasn't looking at it mm. and like oh i'm an r&b artist and this is more pop and that's when actually music was way more segregated right mm. and they didn't know what to do with a black woman that had an uh, r&b hit and supposedly they i was pigeonholed because of what what where i was where my label what what label I was on yeah um what I produced before what I did before yeah they don't give black artists that room yeah we got to do what we're supposed to be uh monolithic mm -hmm. and that's bull crap. like it's, it sucks and I said I said at that I was like what else it worked because they got instant radio play not they didn't know what they would they didn't know what to do they didn't have those relationships. 
Ah, from on the pop side. You know what I'm saying? They had to they had to send me to the the, the crossover department or the, you know what I'm saying? The, uh, it was weird, but they uh, knew they needed to get that record played because it was it was doing what it was gonna do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Without them, so they had to. <laughs> you tell them. <laughs> so I mean. It, it it yeah I mean it it was I mean it 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 was a big also international too it's a massive international hit and stuff but yeah. then did you think oh man well, I need to follow that up with other singles like this or did you did you say, well, I did it I, I I thought I said well then I'm gonna do I'm still gonna just do records <clears throat> excuse me I wanted to have some cohesiveness of course on the project but each project I approach like a new project. You know, I was in, a, in whatever space I was in. Mm. With, with, that's why I was so excited to work with Teddy because a I was a fan. Um, but that by that point, you know, I didn't. I really had very little support at the label. It was basically at that point a tax write off. Mm. 